Good morning and welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. On behalf of myself and our senior pastor, Reverend Joe Monahan, we are very happy to be worshiping with you this morning. I invite you to share this stream on your own Facebook page, to clock in your attendance with us. And just like last week, the Greater New Jersey Annual Conference has provided another service for us that we will be beginning shortly. But before we begin service, I want to express the pain that I feel along with so many for what has taken place in our nation's capital this week. Joe and I will be releasing a joint statement about it, so please look for that in your email. And if you need support in any way, please do not hesitate to reach out to either of us. I want to begin this service with a prayer of St. Francis that's been being shared around many uh, social media platforms because it's a prayer for peace. Would you join me in this prayer? Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Welcome. So glad you're here today. In the United Methodist Church, we welcome all people. No matter where you come from, no matter what you're wrestling and struggling with, no matter the challenge before you or the great joys you have, you are welcome. And so thank you for coming today. I'm John Scholl, a bishop in the United Methodist Church serving Greater New Jersey. Greater New Jersey United Methodist Church is 520 congregations all across New Jersey, and we have about 30 church congregations, some in New York State and some in Pennsylvania. And together, we make up this body that seeks to follow Jesus and to be in the world to do the work of God. And so we're glad that you're here with us today. We look forward to worshiping with you and uh, just invite you to sit back, relax, join in, just open your hearts to God. Zia Marta is gonna sing to us everlasting God. Let us worship together. Sins will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever. Our hope, our strong As we wait upon the Lord, as we wait upon the Lord, as we wait upon the Lord, and strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign for.
Thank you so much, Ziamata. We give thanks to God for your talent and uh, just all God is doing in and through you. You know, uh, Ziamata actually works for Wayfair, uh, so you might want to get to know her, but she's not going to be working there long because God's got a calling on her life. She's actually going to Drew Theological Seminary and uh, has finished up her second year, and we just pray for uh, what God has for her next. Um, she has a a child, four months old, and uh, she's just doing a great job. So we give thanks to God for her music, uh, her talents, and just how God continues to lead in her life. Now we're going to move to a time of prayer, and we're going to invite our district superintendent, uh, Hector Burgos, to come forward at this time and uh, open us up in prayer today. Let us pray together. Awesome God, we give you thanks for your everlasting love. That love that never lets us down. That love that is always seeking out to reach out us. That love that is always surrounding us. As we gather from different places to worship you, we give you all praise and honor. And we pray on this day that through your spirit, May our lives be transformed. God, may you bring words of life into our hearts. And may you challenge us to make a difference in the world. God, I pray for all the people who are joining us this day. Open their hearts and minds to you so that they can be changed in your love. In Christ we pray. Amen. Because of your great generosity, we are beginning 2021 strong, and we are so thankful for that. We are so thankful for all the ways that you continue to support this church and its ministries, that your offerings and tithes go not just for local need, but for statewide need and national need and global need. And we thank you for that generosity, and there are many ways that you can give. One is on our app. Uh, you can also go to our website, medfordumc.org slash give. You can text MedfordGive to 77977, or you can mail a check to 2 Hartford Road in Medford, New Jersey, 08055. I also, as expressed in Friday's email, I also just want to offer my own gratitude on behalf of the staff for your very generous love offerings. It really is such a blessing uh, and is once again, just another joy in a very strange and unique year and end to the year and end in the Christmas season. So I thank you for that and thank you for your continued generosity. time full of war be peace in a time full of doubt just believe yeah there ain't that much difference between you and me in a time full of war be peace in a world full of hate be a light when you do somebody wrong make it right don't hide in the dark you were born to shine in a world full of hate be a light la 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 in a place and each change make a difference in a time full of noise just listen cause life is but a breeze you better live it Place in each change make a difference. In a world full of hate, be a light. When you do somebody wrong, make it right. Don't hide in the dark. You were born to shine. In a world full of hate, be a light. Oh, la 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 la. Race 
said you can't win, just slow it down. Yeah, you only get one go around. Cause the finish line is six feet in the ground. In a race you can't win, just slow it down. In a world full of pain, be alive. When you do someone wrong, make it right. Don't hide in the dark. You were born to shine. In a world full of hate, be a lie. Yeah, it's hard to live in color when you just see black and white. In a world full of hate, be a light. Now, I hope you've uh, brought a, a, uh, some of the kids that might be in your household uh, to, together, and I hope you're uh, here with me. And um, today, we're going to be hearing the story about Jesus' baptism. And uh, that's often a scripture passage that's read on the second Sunday of January. And uh, we remember that Jesus was baptized. Now, I'm sure some of you listening uh, were baptized as well. Or uh, maybe if you haven't yet been baptized, we hope you'll get baptized in the future. But um, you can see behind me, there's a bowl of water. And that's what we use for baptism. We, we reach our hands in the water and we place it on uh, people's heads to baptize them. Now, I have a bowl of water right here. And, um, you know, uh, water is really important to life. And when we think about baptism, we think about uh, what are some of the ways that we use water. And that's what also baptism symbolizes. So one of the ways that we use water is we drink it. And when we drink water, it nourishes us. It feeds us. And baptism also is something that nourishes our soul. And then also what we do with the water is we wash our hands with it, right? We wash our hands. It cleans us. And one of the symbolisms of baptism is that it washes us clean. Now, you know, you as, as children, you know, you're still learning and growing. But when you get to be uh, older, like uh, your parents or me, um, you know, we do things in our lives that aren't quite right. And uh, baptism reminds us that through Jesus Christ, God forgives our sins. And then the other thing that we do with water is we put it on plants, right? You put water on plants and sometimes the rain outside comes and it waters the plants. And what does it do? It helps the plants to, to grow. That's right. So plants grow because of, because of the water. And so... Um, we uh, do these three things with water, and it reminds us of what God does for us through baptism. Number one, it nurtures us and draws us closer to God. Number two, it, it, we're cleansed through Jesus Christ and God's love because God cares about us. And number three, we grow and we're, we're raised up in God's love. So I want you to remember that. Now, if we were together, I might actually just sprinkle some water on you and tell you to remember your baptism. So maybe today you can just uh, sprinkle some water on yourself and remember your baptism because God loves you and God wants you to remember that you are blessed and that baptism is one of the ways that we are blessed. Thanks be to God. Now we're going to hear a first scripture reading and uh, Hector Burgos is going to come back again and read for us our first scripture lesson. Hear are the words from the prophet Isaiah chapter 64 verses 1 through 4. If only you would tear open the heavens and come down. Mountains would quake before you like fire igniting brushwood or making water boil. If you would make your name known to your enemies, the nations would tremble in your presence. When you accomplish wonders beyond all expectations, when you came down, mountains quake before you. From ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eyes had seen any God but you who acts on behalf 
of those who wait for him. Amen. Thanks be to God. You know, uh, Hector has a dramatic story. I hope you hear his story someday about how God called him to ministry and how God has uh, continued to use him and bless him. Now we'll hear the gospel lesson from Sangwon Do, uh, district superintendent in the Raritan Valley District. And uh, as he shares with us the gospel lesson about the baptism of Jesus, again, God being made known uh, through Jesus Christ. Today's gospel reading is from Mark, chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. And so though John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sanders I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sangwon. Will you pray with me? Good and gracious God, uh, we bow our heads before you, uh, just praying that you would open your word to us. God, we pray that uh, in these moments we would just settle. We would just allow our minds to be free to hear what you have to say to us today. God, open our hearts, soften our hearts, that your word might dwell within our hearts. And God, open our ears and open our eyes so that we can see and understand. And God, I pray that uh, you would use me here today to speak to one about what you have for their life. All this we pray. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, uh, previously I spoke about the epiphany of God. And uh, we heard about uh, the story of God being no made known in the birth of Jesus. And how the Magi, the three kings, came and visited. And uh, I spoke about your epiphany, that you, God's speaking to you, and God has a word, and God wants to be manifested in your life. God wants to, because God's got a purpose for your life. God's got meaning for your life. And now this week, I want to talk about that you are the epiphany. As God speaks to you, now you become the epiphany. You become God's manifestation in the world. God is working in and through you. You know, John Wesley, our founder of uh, Methodism uh, back in the 1700s, um, was a man who was devoted to God. He loved God, he cared about God, and he had a strong will. And that strong will drove him, literally drove him, to do everything good he could for God. His father was a pastor, a rector, actually, in the uh, Church of England. And John Wesley became a rector in the Church of England, a, a pastor in the Church of England. And, um, and, and John Wesley believed that if he lived his life just as God wanted him to do, God would be pleased with him and God would be happy with him. Now, John Wesley um, had a mission to the United States. And on two different occasions, he came to the United States to begin to preach the word and spread Methodism uh, here in the United States. And so uh, he would take a ship across, as they say, across the pond, and, uh, and uh, he would preach and teach. Uh, and he did that on two occasions. And on both occasions, his mission actually was a failure. It didn't really take off. It didn't, uh, it didn't catch like he thought it would. 
And the second time he was coming back, he was on the ship and he was coming back to England and there was a violent storm and the boat uh, rocked to and fro and he was, uh, he was very afraid. He was scared. And then over in one of the corners of the ship, um, there were some Moravians. That's a denomination, the Moravians. And they were sitting there singing and praying and rejoicing. John Wesley's like, what are they doing? We might sink. How can they be singing and praying, singing these hymns of joy and, uh, you know, praising God? And he just couldn't understand it. And then uh, later he learned about um, how they felt blessed by God and it wasn't what they needed to do to please God, but that God had already blessed them and loved them and accepted them just as they were. And all they could do was praise God. Well, uh, shortly after John Wesley got off of the ship, um, he found his way to um, uh, Straight Street and had an Aldersgate experience there in which, uh, his, as he says, his heart was strangely warmed. And what he came to understand was there was nothing he could do to make God love him, but that God already loved him. And that was his epiphany. It was, it was his new revelation for him. And now, you know, he was still a pretty serious guy, but his ministry took on new forms and new life. As a matter of fact, after that, he began to actually get outside the church and go out into the fields and preach. He uh, began to um, go to the prisons and visit people in the prisons and bring them the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, he set up a mission uh, and, and it was originally called the Foundry. And in the Foundry, there was a, a, a preaching station and there was a place where widows and orphans could live. There was a library and, and, and school for the children. There was a feeding program, all these different things that were happening. And all because his heart took on a new form that he didn't have to try and please God. God already loved him just the way he was. And that's the great thing about the manifestations of God is that God really wants to say to you right today, I love you just the way you are. No matter what anybody else says to you, I love you just for who you are. And I believe, God says, that you can do great things in your life if you just allow me to help change your heart. So John Wesley's story is a powerful story and it gave birth to United Methodism and now we're all around the world and uh, reaching people and doing great work and great ministry. And it wouldn't have happened if John Wesley didn't have his heart transformed. That was God's manifestation, God's epiphany for him. But here's the thing, John Wesley then went out and became the epiphany that people saw in him God at work. And through that, they began to give their lives to Jesus Christ. And John Wesley has had impact uh, generation after generation, century after century, nation after nation, people after people, congregation after congregation, all because he was open to God's manifestation in his life. And so today, I want to talk to you about being the epiphany, that you are the epiphany. And to think about this, um, I want to use three words to, um, to talk about your being an epiphany. The first is, yay, yay God. The second is, yes, yes God. And the third is, yahoo, yahoo your epiphany. Now, we'll get to Yahoo in a minute, but uh, let's, let's start first with yay, God. You know, one of the things that we don't do enough of is just saying, God, you are great. You are powerful. You are everything I need in my life. You love me just the way I am. And all I can do is say, 
Thank you, God. Yea, God. I am so grateful for you. You know, when we begin to praise God, it takes us into a new place. It actually takes us even a little bit outside of ourselves. And when we have that kind of joyous praise spirit, people begin to say, I want some of what you got. I want some of what you got. I see, how, I see your joy. I see how you praise. Uh, I see how you praise other people. I want some of what you got. How can I get that? And that's when you become the epiphany, when people want more of what you have. Now, uh, to do that, one of the things I want to encourage you is also to say, yay me. Now, I know this, you've been taught over time, oh, be humble, um, oh, sacrifice. And I'm not saying don't be humble, and I'm not saying don't sacrifice. But, you know, there are also things to celebrate in your life because God is in your life. And so here's, here's something I want you to do. I want you to develop a habit that every morning you ask yourself, what were three things that went well yesterday? What were three things that went well yesterday? Now, developing a habit is hard. And one of the things that I find is if I give myself a trigger, I actually remember to do what the new habit that I'm trying to create. And so uh, for me, in the morning, one of the things that triggers it for me is brushing my teeth. And as soon as I pick up the toothpaste and toothbrush, I remember. And I ask myself, what were three things that went well yesterday? And I remember them. And you know what? It lifts my whole continence. It, it, it just lifts me up. No matter what's happening that day, no matter what's happening on my schedule, it gives me a sense that God is with me, and with God, I can continue to, to see things go well in my life. So I don't know what your morning routine is. Uh, maybe it's when you pour that first cup of coffee. You just ask yourself, what went well yesterday? Or maybe it's uh, uh, having breakfast with somebody and sharing together. Tell me three things that went well for you yesterday and share back and forth. You know, it's just such a boost. But, you know, to create a habit... It's very, very hard. We all have great intentions. We're in the new year. You've probably already made some new year resolutions. I know you're probably saying, oh, don't give me another new year resolution. Um, but what I'm saying is creating a habit of asking yourself three things that went well yesterday, even though there might have been challenges, even though there might have been hardship, even though there might have been things that happened in your life that were really not good, just ask yourself what went well, and you'll be surprised. You'll find every day three things that went well the day before. And then once you've named them, give thanks to God for them. Say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for these things going well. So, yay, God. Praise God for what God is doing in your life. And also remember uh, things that are going well in your life and give thanks to God for those things. Now, the second is, yes, God, being able to say, yes, God, God speaks to you. Uh, God gives you a calling in your life and your calling could be anything. It could be to go to your neighbor and help your neighbor out. It could be to be with a coworker and and uh, assist them. It could be with a friend and to give them a call. Um, it could be with a family member that, you're, you know, is at a distance and you can zoom in or FaceTime together. Um, God's got something for you to do because God's got a message of hope and joy through you to spread to other people. And so every day we need to say, yes, God, whatever you have for me today, yes, here I am, use me. You know, one of our pastors here in uh, greater New Jersey, he's retired now, uh, but still quite active, is uh, Wayne Plumstead. Wayne Plumstead was a district superintendent when I came and ser uh, began serving here just a little more than eight years ago in greater New Jersey. He was on the cabinet. He was a great cabinet member, very, very thoughtful. But on a couple occasions, uh, Wayne has shared his own call story and uh, shared that with others, shared that publicly about how God called his life. Now, Wayne um, has a, a higher pitched voice 
but um, as a child, and even in the college and beyond, um, he had a very high-pitched voice. But he believed that God was calling him to be a pastor. And people told him that he wouldn't be able to be a pastor because his voice was so high that it, it, if he preached, it, it just wouldn't be received well. And he was told that he shouldn't become a pastor. But Wayne said, yes, God, I want to serve you. So he decided that he would continue to study and study the Bible and study the theology, and he would write. If he couldn't speak it and people would receive it and hear it, he could use his written form. And Wayne is a great writer. He is an excellent writer. But in that process, a professor said to him, well, Wayne, if God is calling you to preach, maybe we can work with that. And Wayne began to speak work with a speech person who taught him how to modulate his voice and how to lower his voice. And over time, Wayne continued to practice and he lowered his voice. And you know, I've heard Wayne preach several times. His messages are always deeply meaningful, deeply powerful, have spoken to me. And you know what? His voice never got in the way of the message. And that's because Wayne said, yes, God, here I am, I'll serve you. If I can't preach, I'll write. And in the midst of that, God said, no, you're going to preach. You're going to pastor. You're going to lead the church. And God helped him to uh, develop his voice so he could do that. Jesus, at his baptism, said, yes, God, I'm ready to take on the ministry that you have for me. The story of the baptism is a powerful story. Um, here it is, uh, John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. Uh, Jesus comes to the, to the River Jordan. John says, no, I should be baptizing you. Jesus says, no, I'm to be baptized. This is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. This is when it all gets started for Jesus. And uh, the, the heavens open up. This is my beloved child with whom I'm pleased. And then Jesus heads to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights to center himself, to quiet himself so that he can be fully ready for this important and powerful ministry that he has. But he said, yes, God, yes, God. And even toward the end of his life, the last night of his life, he's praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and he knows what's about to happen the next day. He knows that he'll be crucified and he prays and he prays earnestly. And then he says, God, if there is any way that this cup can be removed from me, let it be removed. And then he pauses and he listens and he listens to himself and what he's been called for. And he says, not my will but your will, God. Yes, God, even at the end of his life. What does it look like for you to say, yes, God, here I am. You know, uh, sometimes I use these illustrations about clergy and their calling and things of that nature. You know, you don't have to be a clergy person to say yes to God. You know, my parents, and I've met amazing laity throughout my whole life that have served in many different ways. But, you know, when I think about my parents, two strong lay people in the church, and how many lives they touched, how many lives they transformed, how many, how many people um, came to know Jesus through them. Just their love and their commitment and teaching Sunday school, teaching youth group, uh, doing mission projects, taking, taking young people on retreats. Uh, they did all kinds of things. And you know, when John Wesley started the Methodist movement, it was never meant to be a church. It was never meant to be a, a clergy movement. It was meant to be a lay movement in which we supplemented what laity were already getting in their churches, and uh, that this was a lay movement that would move the church forward. And over time, uh, Methodism became a denomination, but it was a lay movement. 
And you know, sometimes uh, I feel that we become too clergy dependent, that the laity are so key and important to the future of the United Methodist Church and the future of people. And so what are you going to say yes to? What are you going to say, yes, God, here I am. I'm ready to do what you call me to do. I'm ready to be an epiphany. And uh, then lastly, um, you know, Yahoo God, Yahoo your epiphany. Uh, the word Yahoo can mean different things, but today I'm using it in that sense of hip, hip, hooray. I celebrate this. I celebrate what God is doing in and through me. I celebrate the possibility. And so um, celebrate what God is doing through you. And as I said earlier, yes, you can be humble and celebrate. Um, you can talk about what God is doing in and through you. You know, sometimes I think that um, people, um, you know, become so humble, don't want to be prideful that we never really get to hear the story of God and what God is doing in and through them. And so it's not boasting. It's talking about what God is doing through you. And we can praise and say, hip, hip, hooray, God, for what you're doing. You know, um, one of the things, though, as you do that, that's so important is that you always remember to give thanks to God because your life and the lives that you touch through your life is because of God. Maybe people on, that have come before you who God has been in their life and has touched your life or touched somebody else's life that has touched your life and that we build on this from generation to generation. And so uh, just giving thanks to God for what God has done and continues to do. As a matter of fact, I talked about developing a habit at the beginning of the day and remembering what went on the day before, three things that went well. Well, you can also end your day with gratitude. And that keeps you perfectly balanced as you Yahoo God and as you Yahoo your epiphany, you know, as you celebrate what God is doing in your life. Just what are three things you're grateful for, for that day that's happened in that day? Um, Simple things. And again, develop a trigger, you know, whatever it is. Uh, you know, my trigger is uh, just before I get into bed, I, I've got two pillows there. I put one of them aside because I only use one pillow when I sleep. And when I do that, it triggers for me to say, what are three things I'm grateful for today? What do I thank God for? And so I tried to begin my day with remembering what has gone well and uh, giving thanks for that that gives my spirit a boost so that I can be the epiphany in the world. And then at the end of the day, what are three things I can be thankful for that day? That I can thank God, that God has done and touched my life. Uh, that maybe something I've seen how God has touched somebody else's life. Or maybe I've seen something that the church has done. And uh, thank God for those things. You begin the day by being well and recognizing what's going well in your life, and you end the day by thanking God. Can't get any better. And you know what? In the midst of that, God is ready to speak to you because you've opened up your heart for God. You know, God's got so much for us, but we've also been in a challenging time and a challenging season. I know uh, many of us wanted to get out of 2020 as soon as we could. All the different things that have happened in 2020, a pandemic, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, wildfires, uh, racism, uh, many, many things. And many of us have just talked about, uh, I just want to get past 2020. I can't wait for 2021. Well, you know what? I actually think 2020 has been an epiphany year, that in this year, God has been speaking to us, that God has been sharing things with us. You know, I look at GNJ and the epiphany year it's been for us. We learned that we could change very, very quickly. 
Within two weeks, more than 500 congregations moved from being in their sanctuaries to worshiping online. That's an epiphany that we could change and adjust that quickly. We also saw and learned that we could develop relationships in new ways, that we could be in relationship with other people in new ways. Not perfect, not the best, but it, that it, we could make it work, that we could uh, make these things come together. An epiphany that we don't always have to be with one another. Have any of you out there started a new tradition uh, during COVID that uh, you'll continue after COVID because you've just so enjoyed it? For me, I get together uh, every Friday night. Beverly and I get together every Friday night with four other couples, five couples. We all get on, the, on, on Friday night and we just laugh and we kid and we tell stories and we have a good time together. And guess what? We're separated by miles. We're in five different states. But this I can tell you, it's going to continue after the pandemic because we've just so enjoyed those times and look forward to those times. You know, there's all kinds of epiphanies that happened in 2020. It wasn't a great year. It was a hard year. We lost people. We uh, were separated from people. We couldn't worship like we normally worship. We couldn't minister like we normally ministered. But yet, God is seeing us through. And God is saying to us, even in your greatest challenge, I am with you and that you can move through this. So let's keep listening for God's voice and God's manifestations, God's presence, God's revelation right before us. And then, Go and live it, because that's what's so important, is living it in the world so that others, too, might have an epiphany. Amen. Will you pray with me? Most gracious God, we come to you today. And to be honest with you, God, I never thought I'd say this. But there are parts of 2020 I thank you for. In the midst of all the challenges and the heartache, the loss, inconveniences, you were with us. We weren't alone. And in the midst of it, we found new ways of being and loving and caring. God, I just thank you for each and every day of life. Even the hardest days are still a blessing with you. And so thank you, God. God, as we have closed out 2020 and now moved into 2021, it's still clear that the pandemic is with us. It's still clear there are more challenges ahead. And so, God, let us keep looking to you. Let us keep holding each other in prayer. And let's keep journeying together. God, I pray for each one here today. I pray, God, for their strength. I pray, God, for their health, for their well-being. And, God, I pray for their life that you would be open to them and that they would see you all over again. That you'd warm their heart, even if it's in a strange way, one more time. And that God, in the midst of all the challenges, in the midst of all the problems, we would still remember that the day before there were three things that went well. And in that, and in the new day, there were things that happened that we want to thank you for. And so God, keep us remembering those things that go well. And also those things 
that we're grateful for. And may they be the bookends of our day and our life. God, we pray for all of those in the hospital. We pray for all of our health care workers. We pray, God, for our new president who prepares to take office. We pray, God, for leaders in churches and communities, in towns and states, in the world. Bless them, O oh God, to lead your people. And all this, God, we pray and give you all the glory and all the honor. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. Let us continue to worship in song as we hear again and praise God together. Well, again, thank you for joining us today. I pray it was a blessing for you. And uh, I pray as you go, go forth into the rest of this day and into the week and even into the rest of this year, that God will continue to speak to you, that there will be an epiphany waiting for you just around the corner. And then you'll turn another corner and you'll be that epiphany. And so as you go, May the blessings of God Almighty go with you. May health be with you. May peace be in your heart and your soul. And may joy abound so that all might see in you the love and the grace of God through Jesus Christ. In the name of the one who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. <laughs>